All the men, please join me and we'll go inside. The women, please stay in the shade. They will bring holy relics for you to venerate. We'll go inside, we'll venerate, we'll come out. So yeah, we, we should be leaving here in less than an hour. But you had a the monastery here is from the 5th century. St. Sabas came here in 478 and he was staying in a cave, which we'll see from here. We can take a look. Is everyone here? St. Sabas was already living in the desert for four years before he came here. He was roving and sleeping in the sand and eating only the roots that he dug from the ground. When he was sleeping one night, he had a vision and he was shown this cave and he was told to come here to colonize the desert. So he started living and for five years he remained by himself. Until 483, he started receiving the first monks who came to stay with him. And they filled the Kidron Valley here. So the patriarch who was friends with St. Savas, he was a disciple of St. Athemios the Great, so he knew St. Savas very well. He said, okay, well, come tomorrow and, you know, we'll decide what to do. So he called St. Savas to be there the next day, and St. Savas was there, and the monks were there, and he said, here's your abbot, and he made it official. And then he consecrated this church and made St. Savas accept the priesthood in 491. So he made him an official? Uh, yes, Savas. official. First he told them, who started this, him or you? How can you throw out him? He can throw out you, but you can't throw out him. It's not, you know, the way it works. So St. Salas became, he still had problems. Eventually, many of the monks who were secretly originists left the monastery and they went out. They tried to destroy the monastery, but they found themselves walking around in a cloud in the desert, not being able to see. Eventually, they found a ruined place near Hebron, and it was, they were living in this ruined out, you know, you could say like uh, these people living in these abandoned buildings today. And St. Sava went there and he built him a monastery. He did so have no one. hard feelings. One is called the uh, Tibigon of St. Sava's, which was developed in this monastery. And a liturgical, uh, yeah, Tibigon, and, and it's used throughout the, uh, throughout the church by the monasteries, most of the monasteries, and of course uh, Russia has incorporated that into their liturgical life. Uh, the Church of Constantinople simplified it and we have what we call the Cathedral de Bigon, uh, which we use in the parishes today, which is a more simplified, they cut, 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 they kind of made a little short. St. Simeon of Thessaloniki? Who's yes, during that time, yeah, the 13th century. So what years are we talking about now that he's, uh, he's, he was active? Yes, um, from, from the abbot here he was 491, but before that, 483 he became the leader of the monastery, 491 he became a priest, 533 he died, and he was active until he was, well, 96 when he died. So he was after the fourth of the council, before, at the time of Justinian. Yeah, he was from, he met Justinian, he met Justinian. before he died. Very interesting. Yes, um, the monks here, by the way, they were very strong against the Monophysites. And there was a, a whole thing going on at that time where the emperor was trying to impose the Monophysite patriarch on the people of Jerusalem. First, there was uh, Patriarch Elias, who was also a disciple of St. Athenios the Great, and he refused to denounce the Council of Chalcedon. So he was thrown in prison, and another one was to take his place, named John, who had sort of agreed to, to condemn the Council of Chalcedon. But this was kind of a ruse, and while he was in prison, before he was let out, he met with some of the leaders of monasticism here, who told them that, go along with it, and then when you're ready to denounce it, we will gather here. And 10,000 monks came from the desert, and they denounced all those who don't accept the Council of Chalcedon. Anathema to them, who don't ac accept the four councils as the four gospels. And so, even though the emperor was with his forces here, the duke or whatever, uh, they couldn't do anything because of the amount of monks who had gathered here. And so Chalcedon was accepted officially by the patriarch here. And of course,
desert fertile and your longing for God brought forth fruits in abundance by the radiance of me Say.